Welcome to Redbeard and the Den of Tools. Howdy ho, guys and gals, it's Red, your friendly neighborhood tool bear, back again here in the Den of Tools. And today we're talking about something, a subject that, you know, really blows. <laughs> yeah, we're talking about air compressors. Oh, it's so exciting. Now, I know everyone's going to have all sorts of opinions on this. It's really kind of wild the way uh, people get uh, kind of tribal about their air compressors, but they do. So, uh, you know, let's 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 kind of cover the topic real quick, shall we? Now, air compressors can be anything from, you know, this little tire compressor. You know, it's got no tank. It's just used to blow up like, you know, a bike tire or a soccer ball or, you know, the tire of your car. Uh, in fact, for those of you driving hybrids and such, you probably don't have a spare tire. You probably have one of these in your trunk. Now, they can go all the way on up to, say, something like this $52,000 you know, totally enclosed, uh, you know, industrial compressor and, and even bigger, you know, that, let's not even say that that that's the limit. They, they can get much bigger than this, but the real truth is a, an air compressor is just like any other tool and you want to use the right tool for the job, right? So, you know, you could look at something like this. If you want to do airbrushing and that's all you're ever going to do, then, then maybe a little one like this. He's got a little ha handle there, a little holder, I mean, for the, the airbrush. You know, it's all set up. It's nice and small. It's pretty quiet. There you go. Say you're doing, you know, nailing, you're, uh, you know, doing framing, stuff like that. You just need a, a compressor for a nail gun. You're going to want one of these little pancake compressors. You know, say you need a lot more air on the job site. You're going to, and you're not going to have access to electricity. You're going to want a wheeled gas powered, you know, air compressor like this. So, you know, it, again, these are all about the right tool for the job. And what we're talking about here is kind of generalities. We're talking about, say, shop air compressors. For the average guy, for the DIYer, for the, someone who's a little bit more serious, and maybe even somebody who runs a small professional shop or something. We're not going to get crazy with this. This is all for, you know, 90% of the audience out there, what they're going to use for, you know, their air compressed needs. But let's talk about real quick what an air compressor does. And I always kind of think of it as like a backwards engine. You've got a piston and rather than pulling air in along with a fuel mix and compressing it, what you're doing is you're running that compressor to push air literally into a smaller space. In this case, uh, an electric motor runs a wheel that's hooked up to a, a piston and in that shaft, it compresses the air, which goes through that line. Now, this is kind of weird because the line comes out the top there, goes through that and goes down and into the tank. All right. You've got your switch. You've got all these, you know, they're, they're actually fairly complicated little devices uh, doing a fairly simple task. Uh, but, you, you know, you've got your regulator. You've got your gauge. Uh, you got your airline. All these are intrinsic parts of a compressor and how it works. There, there's two types of, essentially two types. Now, there's different ways to compress the air. There's screw types. There's piston types. There's this diaphragm thing. There's there are different methods. But basically, we're talking about our piston compressors. And in this situation, uh, what we're going to talk about is there's single stage, where it's got one piston. And then there's dual stage, which has two pistons like this. They're all run off the same motor. And what happens is they compress the first one. And when you compress a gas like, like air, it gets warm. So if you want to compress it again, you got to run it through an intercooler and it's going to come down into a, a second stage compress, uh, you know, piston section where it's going to get compressed again. Now, there are different methodologies to this, but this is by, by far and wide the most common form of two stage air compressor. And real quick, let's talk about the two things that are going to be probably the most important to you. First is going to be CFM and that's cubic feet per minute. All right. That's how fast the air gets from one side to the other side in, in measurements of, of cubed feet. So this is a very simplistic drawing. But basically, if you get a tube like this, it's kind of narrow. Uh, and, you know, this is not taking into account the PSI and all this stuff. We'll get into that. So slow your roll. Um, but this gets, you know, basically you're putting, you know, one cubic foot, you know, down there. So you can get like, say, 10 cubic feet per minute. If you have a larger tube to push it through or you're pushing harder, let's say, you could, you know, essentially double that or more. But that's the basic, you know, idea here, which is, you know, these could be pushing at the same speed. But because there's a, a, a larger method of transportation, it is essentially moving more air. 
Now this doesn't talk about the pressure of that air, how hard the air is being pressed. And for that, we need to talk about PSI. So you, we've got, we got tanks at one end, we're pushing it. In this case, we could be running at 90 PSI. Those, those are scales over the end. Don't, don't mock the bear's artwork. Don't, don't do it. Anyway, so you could be pushing, you know, completely different CFMs, double the CFM at the same PSI. All right. And a lot of times that's eventually what's going to get checked with your regulator and, and you're going to set what you want your PSI to be for your device. But that's for another discussion. But basically, those are the two things that you need to think about when you're using your air compressor, when you're buying your air compressor is how much CFM do I need and how much PSI do I need? And usually it's a combination of how much CFM at the PSI are we talking about? And that comes down to the tool that you're going to use, because really an air compressor is just a means to an end. And it's all about the tool that you snap on it. Basically, it's an energy production device akin to, say, a battery or even an AC cord. This is just another means to power a device. So Harbor Freight has this great little uh, schematic up here. And I'm going to link to this down in the video description so you can pull it up. But it, it's got one of the best representations as to this is what, you know, this is how big a compressor you're going to need based on the tool that you're going to use. You know, we're looking at, you know, hobby compressors and you're going to be using it for, you know, inflating the kids' pool toys to blowing dust off your shop uh, or out of your shop to, you know, uh, doing some airbrushing, light paint kind of work. Very, very light duty. The next step, you're going to get in the nailing. This is where you're going to see like your uh, pancake compressors, maybe slightly larger. You're going to run a small finish nailer, maybe even a framing nailer. You're going to have to get up there to get, you know, to a floor nailer and such. Uh, but then you're going to see, at that point, you're going to see tanks in the 4 to 10 range, maybe even a little bit bigger. Auto repair. Now, this is where you start really powering what a lot of people can think of as, you know, air-powered tools. You, you've got your air-powered ratchets, your impact wrenches, air hammers, and stuff like that. Uh, and up from there, we're going to get into cutting, grinding, and sanding. This, this is key, and this is what I want you to think about. Anything that spins at high revolution, anything that spins at a high revolution just eats air. I mean, I've used an air-powered Dremel on a 10-gallon tank, and it couldn't keep up. It was anything that spins, uh, high revolution-wise. So we're talking sanders, we're talking cutoff wheels. Uh, just uh, what else was I thinking about? There was something else. Anyway, grinders, air grinders. Anything like that is going to be kicking off your compressor, trying to fill back up that tank. And if you don't have something big enough, you're going to be hitting your head against the wall. You're going to be, you know, so upset with with the performance. And then above that is we get into higher end paint kind of stuff. Uh, high end gravity, uh, HVLP guns, siphon paint guns, texture, like you're gonna spray uh, texture on a stucco wall or ceiling kind of stuff. Anything that's gonna be moving large amounts of air as well as say pushing a high viscosity, uh, you know, liquid through it. So anyway, oh, and also we talked about the two other things that I often chat about, which is oilless versus oiled. And they have a really great, you know, synopsis here. Oilless means low maintenance, easy setup, <laughs> they, but the thing they don't talk about is how long is it going to last? And that's all dependent on how well the uh, the lubricating surface, like it's kind of like a Teflon got put in there, how well that holds up. And in some cases, I've heard of them lasting forever, and a lot of them, I've heard of them not <laughs> lasting that long. Uh, and then we got oil lubed, and oil lube really comes down to regular maintenance, uh, you get to control that if you stay on top of it. In fact, if you want to do it more than is advertised, you know, the chances are it's going to last longer. I've seen oilist or oh, sorry, I've seen oiled compressors, cheap ones last 20 years. So it, that's what I like about the oiled ones. But that takes into another account. And we're not going to get into this today, which is oil to the tool and air filters and stuff like that. That's going to be for a, a more advanced uh, conversation. But right now, let's talk about compressors. First up. We've got the cheapy compressors. This is the category uh, zero to hundred bucks. This is kind of the hobbyist compressors. You're just getting started. You just want to have something. You want to run an airbrush. You want to maybe, you know, blow sawdust and stuff off your tools and out of your shop. You want to be able to inflate the tires and the kids toys and stuff like that. This is going to be the most basic compressor you can get. Uh, you'll see pancake compressors in this size, small hot dog style compressors like this. Uh, but Here's the truth. <laughs> Here's the sad truth on these. A lot of these, by I mean a lot of them, I mean all, 
all of them are sketch. All right, they're 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 sketchy. They they're not. It, comp, how do I say this? Compressing air is a difficult job. Think about. It. Try to grab some air right now. Just reach out and try to grab it. it. It's not easy, and it takes a lot of work. It builds up a lot of heat. Don't ever lean on the the working mechanism of of your uh, compressor after it's been running for twenty minutes. You'll you'll get a nice little tattoo there. Anyway, the point is that. Compressing air is a tough job, and these little compressors, there's just not enough to them to make them last a long time. These are, will get you by for now. You have very light duty. And, and, you know, for those of you who are doing, you know, super light stuff, maybe airbrushing and stuff like that, maybe this will be it. Maybe that's all you really need, and, it, and it'll last a long time. Problem is, these are all going to be oilless compressors. So you're kind of rolling the dice. I looked high and low at reviews. These are the only ones that don't get mixed to horrible reviews. So you, you can go cheaper. And Walmart's got one, I think, for 50 bucks. Harbor Freight's got one that on sale goes for 40 bucks. Uh, but if you're going to go this route, I would suggest getting something like this, uh, this Campbell Hossfeld. But before we move on, let me give you some specs on this. One third horsepower, three gallons, 110 max psi uh sure let's let's let's, sure, let's go with that uh 0.36 cfm at 90 psi that that's nothing all right 0.5 at 40 remember you're always going to be able to move more air at less psi again as i said it's oilless it weighs 20 pounds it comes with a 25 foot hose and the accessories pictured there and you can get it with and it comes with a one-year warranty uh, I'm going to put links for all these down below so you can find what I'm looking at here. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about uh, what we can do if we had $100 or more. Say $100, $200. All right, now we're talking about the, the Central Pneumatics 21-gallon uh, air compressor. We got a 2.5 horsepower compressor, 21 gallons, oil lubricated. That means you, your maintenance is up to you. This will deliver 125 max PSI. Air delivery is 5.8 CFM at 40 PSI and 4.7 at 90 psi that's that's fairly decent guys that you can run a lot of different tools off of that uh now this does weigh uh, almost 90 pounds the nice thing about it is it's a vertical style which means it takes up less floor space that's one of the things i like about it and of course like harbor freight it comes with a 90-day warranty which means this is one of the things you take home you beat on it you make sure that if it's going to die it dies within that 90 days uh, again since it's oiled the maintenance after that is up to you, and if you stay on top of it, you know, this should last you a good long time. This is the air compressor that I have in my shop, and it's been really, you know, it's been a workhorse for me. Now, it's, I, I'm not going to say it's the most robust compressor out there, but I'll be honest, there's not much in that sub, like, $300 range that's really a solid compressor. As I said before, when you start talking about, uh, you know, moving air, you're, you're gonna, it's a lot of work. It's hard work for these little motors to do. Okay, there are some out there that are pretty solid under $300. But what you're gonna do is you're gonna end up paying $200 for something that's got the capacity of that Campbell, that Campbell I showed you. So it's give or take. For your average shop, this, this is gonna be plenty right here. This is a great compressor. It's got some drawbacks. It's not perfect, okay? And I know some people are gonna chime in, oh, it's a piece of junk, blah, blah, blah. If you haven't owned it, if you haven't used it, then, you know, then that's not really, you know, appropriate for you to chime in and say. The fact is, and here's the other thing, is you got to think about personal experience. You know, is it really useful hearing individual experience? In some ways it is, in some ways it isn't. If somebody's like, hey, I used it, and here's what it felt like, and here's what I thought it could do, and here's, you know, all this other stuff about how, what I liked about using it, that's great. That's good personal experience. Somebody says, I bought it and it died. Well, on its own, that's not really useful. You need to have a good statistical, you know, base to, to draw from. Having one person say, well, I used it and it was bad, or I used it and it was good, isn't really enough. Um, I, I like to say my family, when I was a young cub, we had a Ford Pinto. It, it did not blow up. I am, I'm still here, right? <laughs> Does that mean I would recommend you, you know, for your family car, you get a Ford Pinto? Oh, no. Of course not. But, you know, again, you know, I had a buddy who also had a Honda and, he, and it died after, was a Honda Accord and it died after 5,000 miles. The engine blew up. 
Now, yeah, it was in warranty and they took care of it, but is, you know, he now to this day hates Hondas. Okay, yeah, so he's got a personal grudge against them, but that doesn't mean that you shouldn't buy a Honda. It's a rock solid vehicle. So you got to understand when you're looking at this stuff, what personal experience means, when it's useful and when it's not. Uh, I I don't just go by my own personal experience. I do a lot of research on this stuff, guys. I spend a lot of time going into these videos. And, uh, and hopefully it shows. If not, then maybe I need to go back to the drawing board. Anyway, for 150 bucks, you're not gonna find a better compressor than this. All right, now let's say you got a little bit more to spend and you want something a little more solid. Now, I'm not gonna say this is gonna be a much more capacity. In fact, we're probably gonna step back in capacity and that is the California Air Tools compressor. This is a two horsepower, 10 gallon compressor. It's oilless, 125 max PSI, 5.6 CFM at 40 PSI, 4.4 at 90. It's 86 pounds. Uh, but here's the thing about these California compressors. They're whisper quiet. No, I, I kid you not. This thing, all right, this is a bigger one. So this one runs at 75 decibels. All right, just so you know, normal conversation is 50 to 60 decibels. And a uh, hairdryer is running at like 80. Uh, anything below 75, or I should say anything 75 or below, is con considered safe by OSHA standards. You don't need to wear hearing protection or anything. By, co by comparison, that Harbor Freight compressor I was just talking about is rated at, here, let me check the numbers. Oh, yeah. I rate Banshee screaming in your ear level. Trust me. It, it's a good compressor, but yeah, I said it had drawbacks. Yeah, that's one of them. These things are loud as snot. Now, usually oiled compressors are quieter than oilless compressors. Well, with, uh, with California uh, tools, they're the exception that proves the rule. That thing is super quiet, and that Harbor Freight is a screaming demon from hell. And if you're running in a closed shop while you're in it, you're going to want to wear ear protection. All right, moving on. Let's say you got some more money to spend. you are got three to $400. You want a nice, hefty air compressor for the shop. At this point, we're going to be talking about the Central Pneumatics. Again, this is from Harbor Freight. 29-gallon, 2-horsepower, 150 PSI air compressor. This thing is a beast, all right? This is, let's see here, it, this is oil lubricated also. Uh, it's 5.9 CFM at 90 PSI and 7.3 CFM at 40 PSI. See, now that's where you see the real difference is at the lower PSI, you can move a lot more air. This weighs 164 pounds, comes with a 90 day warranty. This is, as you see, this is in the five star rating here. This is, I know lots of guys who have this compressor and they swear by it. On top of it, one of the best things is because the, the, the way it's set up there, uh, the belt driven to that compressor, it's not nearly as loud as that screaming demon, the 21 gallon compressor. This is, I'm not gonna say it's as quiet as the California air compressor, but it's not gonna immediately make you bleed out of your ears. Okay, now let's say you've got, a, now this is probably, we're going to the big boy here. This is, you've got a, a, a bunch of money to spend and you want something that you're never gonna have to worry about, you know, running out of air in your shop or having to upgrade at a later point. Now, again, we're talking about your average home shop, small professional shop kind of stuff. Uh, and that is the Cobalt 60 gallon air compressor. Now I've talked to a lot of people who've got this and they swear by it. This thing is a 3.7 horsepower. Now note, you're gonna to need to run 220 for this, all right? Or two, was it 240 or two, 220? Uh, it is a dual stage compressor. Remember we talked about that at the beginning. This thing has a 60 gallon tank. It's oil lubricated, it has 125 max PSI with 10.7 CFM at 175 PSI. And it'll move 11 CFM at 90 PSI. And it runs at, get this, 87 decibels. Okay, yeah, that's louder than you want. You don't want to stand right next to it, but it's not going to run you out of your shop. This thing does weigh 255 pounds. You're going to want to bolt it to the floor. And it comes with a three-year warranty. This thing is, it, it, you're going to have to get a pretty big shop before you're going to outgrow this compressor. This is something that should last you for as long as you need it to last. All right, now let's, we're going to talk real quick about setting up air compressors. Uh, like 
and what I, what I mean is a lot of people write, like to run airlines, okay? They'll, they'll set a compressor up in the corner and they'll run airlines throughout their shop. Please, please, please do not use PVC line. Okay, I'm not going to get into a big, long discussion about the best way to set it up. You know, here's somebody who's got it run to a, a spool reel in the center of his garage. And that's great if that's what you want to do. I think he's running a PEX line there. Uh, and uh, But anyway, the don't you do not run PVC. And the reason is you're dealing with essentially a bomb here. And PVC is not meant to hold that much pressure. And when it pops, it's going to send sharp shrapnel just flying through your shop and you don't want to be there when it happens now here's another you know setup he's got it off in the corner he's got a long hose reel he can pull it out across the shop as you can see he's running through several different staged filters there with a drain valve and all that and that's a great setup and all but again uh if you notice he is running a line that goes out to the rest of his shop there and that's a, a black iron tubing line so that's what i highly recommend that you use that that's pretty much the go-to that most professionals use and the uh yeah so stay away from the pvc some people also like to deal with the loud compressors by creating these silencer boxes that they put them in this is a cool setup and i've often considered doing it myself some things you need to take into account though is airflow if you set up something like this that motor needs air desperately needs air to, to stay cool not just to compress but to stay cool and if you don't do it right you will burn up your compressor be forewarned <laughs> Lastly, uh, you go across Craigslist and you'll find all sorts of stuff like these old vintage compressors and stuff. Some of these are great. Some of them work really, really well. The one thing I'm going to say is check the drain valve on it, check the water, and check what that water looks like. Make sure there's not rust. Because if you get one of these that's rusted from the inside out, again, what you've got here essentially is a bomb. So be careful when you buy a used compressor. All right, that's all the bear has for you today. Uh, I know you guys are going to have all sorts of comments telling me what I got right and what I got wrong. Uh, again, you forgot the first rule of uh, Den Club, uh, which is the bear is always right. Anyway, <laughs> take care, everyone. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. And as always, shine on.